So when Neville says to not forget the conceiver, the idea is that I have a perception and my perception is coming from a conception and my conception is coming from a conceiver. And the conceiver is what Neville calls God, the one who conceives things to be. And I conceive myself to be a certain way. And so I start to perceive reality that way. And so if I need to change something, I go to the conceiver and I change my conception. Now, there's this idea that Neville spoke about when he says that only slaves have masters. And so if I see masters in the world, it's not that they're masters over me. It's that it's showing me my own slavery. And the, another idea of saying is that if I see giants in the world, it's that they're showing me my own grasshopperness as I see myself as a grasshopper. And that's why I see giants in the world. And a giant doesn't have to be just a person. It could be as simple as, a, as, a, as criticism. I can make things into giants. I can make criticism into a giant. I can make things into giants and therefore I feel small. And so it reflects back to me my conception of myself. And so Neville has the idea of leaving the world alone and then changing the conception of yourself. And that first part is so crucial to leave the world alone, to leave it exactly as it is, leave the people exactly as they are, leave the thoughts and the words that you've heard, leave what you've imagined, leave what you've said, leave what has been done exactly as it is. And from there, you're given a freedom to change your conception of yourself. If you won't do that, then you're going to try to control the world out of fear instead of letting it go and letting it be the way it is. And then the idea is to test this. If I change the conception of myself, will there be a change in my reality? And you keep trying it every single day and you treat it like a test all the time. And when you treat it like a test, you become curious and open about a change in reality. You start to see reality more as a fluid instead of you start putting permanency upon it and you see it more fluid. And then you'll see yourself more fluid. And so when I change a conception of myself, how do I do that? Well, all I do is I simply start being the conception. I stop trying to get a conception. I simply start being the conception. It's, it's an experience. And so I stop trying to get something. And inside myself, there's a mental me. And I make that mental me. I change that. I change the mental me. And I start to feel that I'm one with it because I am. It's a part of me. It's intimate. It's in me. And so I, with the mental me, I can touch a new reality inside of myself. I can interact with it. And I simply start to experience it as a fulfillment. I experience the fulfillment of it. I don't try to make anything happen. I simply change the orientation of the mental me. And it's, it's very simple, but it's the key to changing oneself because there's no, you might be surprised by how little effort it takes. But when you have the willingness, as Neville said, to let go completely of the previous state, you can move into a new state. And he says moving from state to state is simple if you are willing to completely let go. And you can, and it's something you, you, once you, once you get enough of the state you're in, you will let go of it. Once you have the desire to move, you will move. But I move the mental me. I move where I'm at mentally. I test to see if I move the mental me, will there be a change in my world? And if I start to see a change in my world, then I see that the mental me is truly connected to my life. And so if I start to use my imagination to create fears, my life becomes fearful. And so my life and my imagination are so closely connected. And if imagining creates reality, then it's in my best interest to stop imagining conditions and start to imagine the things I desire as fulfillments. So no longer walk around mentally inside seeing with my mental eyes lack. I start to see fulfillment for the sake of seeing fulfillment. I just hear fulfillment for the sake of hearing it because it feels good to my ears, to my mental ears. It feels good to my mental eyes to see that. And I just experience it until a smile gets a pro, you know, put upon my face. And I feel a peace that turns into a patience in my life. And so back to the beginning of this video, if I perceive reality a certain way, if I walk into a room and I see people a certain way, 
that frightens me. I leave them alone and I go back to the conception of myself and I ask myself, how do I see myself? Is, the, is, is their giantness reflecting my smallness? Are they, is, it, is, it, is my state fulfilling itself here because states fulfill themselves through my perception? And so I leave them alone and I make myself bigger. I change how I see myself. I don't bother with them. I don't make them into something else. I don't walk into a room and see masters and make them slaves. I, make, I stop, stop seeing myself as a slave. And so the question becomes is how do I see myself? It's, in a, it's a question you ask over and over and over again. And then eventually you're going to ask, who am I? And then you're going to go back to the conceiver. And that's what Neville's trying to get you to do is to go back to the conceiver, to see that the conceiver is conceiving conceptions of themselves, which is causing perceptions, which, and then that causes behaviors. And so I behave based on how I perceive reality, and I perceive reality based on how I conceive myself. And so uh, you might have heard many things about yourself in your life, but it's not what you heard. It's really what you're hearing now. It's not what you've imagined. It's what you're imagining now. And a perfect example of this, if I see myself as guilty, I will create punishments for myself. So I treat myself based on how I see myself. And if I wish to change how I see myself, then I leave everything exactly as it is. And I, you know, as Neville says, I yield into a new conception. I completely let go and yield myself into something new. And Neville has once said that habit is not a law. And I love that he said that because habit can sometimes feel like a law where you feel like you've been habitually thinking of yourself a certain way for so long, you feel that you're, it's a part of you, but it's not. And habit is not a law. It's something that feels like one because we have such a difficulty getting out of it. But habits can be let go of as well. You can think of it as you're always holding onto a rope with these states and you have to learn to just drop the rope and finally let it go and have the freedom to move so you grant yourself your own freedom and your own restrictions. It all comes from inside of you. If you can see that really all of it is stemming from you, you will, I, in my opinion, you will naturally learn to be more giving towards yourself. And then you start to become more unconditional towards yourself. And you'll stop creating the conditions in which you have first must meet and the qualifications you have to meet in order to finally give yourself what you want inside. You'll let go of these ideas and you'll start to become really an unconditional giver towards yourself. And there's a freedom in that. And it's something that doesn't go away unless you take it away. So it's something that can always be applied to yourself at all times, anywhere. You can drop the senses, maybe for a minute or two, and hear something you want to hear. You can drop the senses and see something you want to see. You don't have to condition it. You don't have to feel that it's got to be in a certain time frame. You don't have to worry about anything. You just experience the fulfillment of it. And so you start to walk in your life always trying to see fulfillment in everything. And you shape it towards your own desire. And you don't let it become this daunting task or this thing you have to do. It's something you start to want to do. It's, it's, a, it's a way in which you start to use your mind differently. You stop using your mind to fear yourself, but to fulfill yourself. And I really love that Neville said this. It takes no time to change a state, only if you're willing to completely let go. I really love that he says it doesn't take much time to change a state, if you're willing to let go. And when you think about it, it it's true. If I have the willingness to let go, an openness to, to really see myself differently, I will do it because I'm tired of the certain states that I've been in for so long. And to reiterate one more time, that if I see giants in my life, it's because I see myself as a grasshopper. So I leave the giants alone, and I get rid of my grasshopperness. I raise myself, I lift myself up. I stop demeaning the name of I am. That's my name. I stop cursing it. I stop punishing it. And I start to redeem it. I start to lift it up. Regardless of what the world says and regardless of what the world thinks, I lift it up and I keep doing it. And I don't really view it as a stressful thing. I really see it as a redeeming of the self, a forgiving of the self. And so it's, a, it's intimate and special. And if you want to talk to me, 
you can go to the description and, and just email me. Thanks for listening.